everybody, Cindy from Blue Star at Home. And I'm here today to do a tutorial on how to make these adorable embellished pumpkins. We will be using Iron Orchid Designs molds to put all these designs on these pumpkins. And I'm gonna show you step by step how easy it is. So stay tuned and we'll get this show on the road. Halloween and fall and Thanksgiving will be here soon. And now is the time to get your pumpkins decorated. So let's dive in and get started. Let's start off by going over the supplies we need together. You're gonna to wanna to get some fake pumpkins from your local craft store. Uh, these little styrofoam ones come from Dollar Tree. They work well. Um, you may want little ones. You may decide on decorating with big ones. So get, gather up your pumpkins, whatever, whatever you want. You're going to need some IOD air dry clay. We're gonna use that in our molds. And speaking of molds, round up some IOD molds. There are so many and all of them just about have something that you could put on a pumpkin. This one is the Florida Lee. It's got some oak leaves and acorns that we're gonna be using. This one is called uh, He Loves Me. And we, believe it or not, we're gonna use these these daisies with the leaves, but we may paint these more like sunflowers or, or just do a monochromatic color scheme, but these are great on pumpkins as well. Classic Elements has just some great decorative pieces, some scroll work and stuff that we can add. And then I've pulled out a few of my first generation molds. So if you've got a collection of older molds, you might use some of those as well because there are things on all of these that we can use. So you're gonna want some, um, at least one, you can do it with just one, IOD mold and some clay. I use cornstarch, I keep some in a little tin here, but that's just cornstarch and a little old paintbrush that I use to condition my molds beforehand. And then you can use an old credit card. I use this old Bondo scraper. Um, to level out your clay, something like that. You're gonna want some glue. I love Eileen's Tacky Glue. Tight Bond works real well if you've got some of that on hand. And you might find a little cuticle tool like this to be helpful to kind of smooth out some clay once we start gluing it on. So that's what we're gonna start with on this first part. So part one is creating your castings and getting them glued on your pumpkins. And then we'll come back and do part two, which will be painting and um, glazing or waxing or highlighting the parts of the molds that you've attached to your pumpkin. So let's get started with part one. Okay, the first pumpkin I'm gonna work on is just a regular, it's kind of a medium size, rounded, basic pumpkin. And I think on this pumpkin, I'm going to use my Fleur de Lis mold and I'm gonna use a, the oak leaves and some acorns to embellish the top of that pumpkin. So, get that ready and then I'm gonna point the camera down so you can see what we're doing. Okay, I've got my supplies together. I'm ready to get started. I use a little mat to work on just to help protect my work surface. Uh, this happens to be one of my granddaughter's placemats, her little princess placemat. I just use the back of it. So I'm gonna start off by putting some cornstarch in my mold. And I just dip my brush in there, get a little bit of cornstarch on there and swoosh it around. I'm gonna be using the 
oak leaves and the acorns. So that one and this one. acorns. I don't know exactly how it's going to lay out, but we'll just play with it after we get some things cast and figure that out. Okay, simple as that and I can I can turn and kind of tap just to get the excess out. Kind of like flouring a cake pan. All right, I use my clay and I have already opened and used part of this package, but I'll tell you a secret. Keep your clay wrapped up in the package. It helps keep it uh, a little more airtight and protected and keeps it from drying out. So I'm just gonna work this in my hands. It is super soft. It is not a craft clay. It's actually a professional quality clay. So it's much nicer than some of the clays you get at the hobby store. And I'm gonna press it right into the mold there. I can use my thumb just to kind of scrape off a little bit of that extra clay. There we go. And then this is where your little scraper, your credit card, your expired gift card, whatever, but I just place it and scrape right across the top and it pulls off a little bit more of that clay, but if you'll notice, it gives you a really nice clean finish around the edges, and that pops right out. So there's my leaf. I'll show you, one of the reasons I love the IOD molds is, see this little rim right here around this heart? That is called a micro rim, and that's what, when you, when you scrape the clay, right on top of that rim. That's what gives you a beautiful finish on your applique and there's just, you don't have to clean anything up. It's, it's ready to glue. So we're gonna glue these on while they're wet. Um, let me get my glue going. some on the back and then I typically just use my finger to smooth that out make sure I, I get it all the way to the edge on, on all those leaf parts and I'm just gonna kind of stick it on gently tap I don't want to mash too hard and mess up my image just tap it on right there. I have another one that I did a test on, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it glued. And there we go. And put that one over here and leave some room for maybe some acorns or another larger leaf. getting there. It's going to be so cute. Okay, let's do some more crafting. Now, this is the clay that I was excess that I scraped off of the leaf. So I'm just going to work this up and reuse it. Let's get an acorn or two. Press it down into the mold. And kind of wipe off the excess. And then I'm going to get my blade and make it smooth. That little acorn just popped right out. Let's do another one this one. There we go. That was 
just about the right amount of clay. And, oops, another little egg. Okay, I've been casting and I have a little collection here and these are all still soft and, and pliable. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my leaves and acorns glued on. So, get some glue, spread it on. Now, sometimes I will use a Q-tip to spread my glue instead of my finger. The problem is sometimes you can get cotton fuzz stuck in your glue, but I don't guess it matters, it's on the back. And I'm gonna put this one right between these two leaves. In fact, I'm gonna kind of overlap one a little bit. There we go. So you can overlap that one just a little bit. And then kind of in this gap, I'm gonna put an acorn. And I think I'll do a little one. Right there. go. Okay, and I think another, maybe I put a big acorn over here. I'm just gonna go around and look and make sure that I've got all of my edges pressed down well. All the way around. On these leaves especially. Okay. Now then, this is ready to paint. So let's paint. Okay, I'm back. We're going to be painting our pumpkin uh, next. And I'm going to show you. I um waited overnight to paint mostly because i just didn't have time to paint yesterday so these molds have dried overnight and i want you to see i mean there's just almost no cracking or anything they really turned out really well the molds did on this pumpkin i made some other pumpkins and I've already painted those this morning, so I thought I would show you. This is just one coat of paint, but this pumpkin I use the Classic Elements mold on to do this really elegant trim. And this was our little Dollar Tree pumpkin. And again, I use Classic Elements. 
and this is just one coat of paint so we've got more paint coming but you can see what that one's going to kind of look like when it's done so um we're ready to paint this one i'm using fusion mineral paint to paint my pumpkins the thing i love about fusion lots of things i love about it but probably the thing i love the most is that it is not a chalk type paint and the top coat is built in so I literally can paint and be done don't have to wax don't have to poly it's just so user friendly and easy to use so I'm gonna be painting this infusions new color called Bellwood this is um, limestone this it's a, a creamy white a yellow tint to it with limestone and this one is called Tuscan orange so I'm gonna use Bellwood it's a really soft green I'll be painting with my zebra brush today this is a round a zebra round um, it has really really soft bristles the finer and softer the bristles the better paint finish you will get on your pieces with fusion um, I don't typically paint furniture with this. You could if you were, it's, it's the brush I recommend if you're just gonna paint one piece of furniture and be done. Um, this is a good little brush. Uh, but I use my Stallmeesters when I'm painting furniture. It's a, it's a much better quality brush. It gives me better results. But this is great for our pumpkins today, so I'm gonna use that. And Bellwood is a really soft green. And the other thing about fusion is it just doesn't take much paint. So, one, two. And you can see how great the coverage is. That's one coat. Um, and this round brush enables me to kind of swirl around and get inside all those nooks and crannies so I don't miss anything. come back and do a second coat make sure I get full coverage but, but you can see already how great that looks okay paint the pumpkin see it's so pretty it's a really pretty soft green you hold it when I'm gonna set it down I hope you can see it down here yeah okay I'm just gonna finish painting to highlight all this amazing molding that we've got going on. Okay. All right. One coat. We're going to let it dry. I'll come back and do a second coat and then we'll go on to our glazing. Okay. So the next 
next step is we're going to begin the embellishment process on our pumpkin. So my pumpkin now has two coats of paint. This is Fusion's Bellwood, really, really soft, pretty green. But we are going to glaze so that we can start highlighting all of the detail in our, um, from our molds. So if you have painted with a chalk type paint, you are going to want to seal with a, a water-based sealer first. Otherwise the glaze will stain your paint. Uh, Fusion has the sealer built in, so I don't have to do a clear coat first. I can just start glazing. Um, I'm using Fusion's Antiquing Glaze. It is amazing and stays, uh, it's called open. It kind of stays wet and pliable longer than the hardware store glazes. So I might give it a try if you are a glaze girl. And it also comes clear. You can make any color of glaze you want by mixing paint into the clear glaze and make uh, a colored glaze. But we're gonna use the antiquing glaze today. And I like to wipe my glaze back with a baby wipe. So I, I just get a really nice finish when I do that. So I'm going to be using the antiquing glaze and just one of our craft brushes. These are synthetic bristle. They are not like the hardware store chip brushes where all the bristles fall out. Um, these are a synthetic bristle and are just great for craft projects like this. So this is the brush I'm going to be using. All right, so I'm going to point the camera down so you can see the process. Okay, let's try that. gonna get a bit of the glaze on my brush and just start dabbing it in and I just want to make sure that I get glaze in all of those nooks and crannies and the grooves in all of the detail just brush it in going to be a great combo on my green pumpkin. Okay, I'm also going to um, brush in the grooves of the pumpkin. In fact, I may just go over the whole pumpkin and then I'll wipe back what I don't want. But I want to make sure I get some in the grooves. Okay, let's try that half. I'm going to grab my baby wipe and just start wiping off what I don't want. You can already see how cool that is. Isn't that awesome? Okay, let me turn here where I can get this side of the pumpkin. And you can wipe back as much or as little as you want. Um, if you 
wipe back too much, you can just come back and apply a little bit more. Or you can wait for it to dry and do a second coat. Right, and then, whoops, this one little last spot right here. There we go. So didn't that just make all of that carving just pop? All right, I'm going to let this dry and the glaze, because it has a long open time, um, is going to take longer to dry than the paint. You could stick it under, you could use like your hair dryer to help it dry faster if you want. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let it dry. And then the next step is going to be that we're gonna come back once this is dry and do some highlights. I think I'm gonna do some metallic highlights on like the some of the acorns and maybe some of the leaves just to give it an extra layer of color and dimension. But you could totally be done here. I mean, this could be finished if you love this look. Um, but we're going to let this dry and then come back and do some highlights. Um, that is one of the reasons why I didn't use a wax. I could have used uh, a wax like Fusion's Espresso Wax, which is a, a medium brown wax, to come in and get the same look with the wax. But wax is always the last, so then I could not come back and highlight over the wax. Um, so I'm going. that's why I used a glaze. Right. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and do our last step, which is some highlights. Okay, I'm back. And our last step is going to be doing some highlighting on our pumpkins. So I've let the antiquing glaze dry overnight. And then this morning I looked at it and thought, ah, oh, so I went in with some copper glaze and just hit the top of the acorns. So you can see where there's just a little bit of copper down in there. It just gives a little bit of bling on the acorns. So now I'm gonna do a dry brush of some metallic just on the, on the leaves so that the whole top just kind of has this really pretty fall bling to it. So I'm gonna use Fusion's Vintage Gold Metallic. And let me point this down so you can see. Okay, so I've got my pumpkin and I've just got one of the, the, the little synthetic craft brushes and I'm just going to dab a little bit in the paint. The metallics are much thicker paint and if you're painting with them I always add some glaze to help thin them out. So I'm just going to tap off the metallic on this plate so my brush isn't really heavy and I'm just going to really gently dry brush kind of over these leaves to give them, it's really subtle, to give them and, and the body of the acorn just to give them some metallic shine. And I don't know if you can tell in the light, but I can see it's just a really subtle difference, but it adds um, a little bit of that fall color. And a really soft shimmer to the leaves on this pumpkin. So can you tell? Yeah, I think you can tell. See how that's got that really pretty metallic shimmer. That's the vintage gold. I want to make sure I hit the base of these acorns. 
Yeah, Ben, I, admit, I think I missed this this leaf right here. There we go. That's it. So isn't that just yummy gorgeous on the pumpkin? Okay, so that one is done. Let me show you the others that I've been working on too. So this big one was painted in limestone and I used Classic Elements molds and the antiquing glaze. And I did brush over this with the vintage gold, but it's so close in color that you can't really see except maybe a glint of the sheen, but isn't that a gorgeous pumpkin right there? And then this one is going to need a stem. I've got to put a stem on it. This one was painted in Tuscan orange, classic elements mold, the antiquing glaze, and then I dry brushed over this in cathedral taupe to give those molds some dimension. All right, let me show you these babies because I found these little pumpkins. And on these, I actually painted the molds. So this was the He Loves Me mold that I painted them like sunflowers. And then just brushed the um, vintage gold metallic over the top of these. So they've got that little shimmer and sheen. This one may be my favorite. I painted the leaves in Tuscan orange and then I highlighted, I glazed them in copper. So, so, so pretty. And the final one, some little greenery on there, but it is also brushed in the vintage gold. So they've got just a really soft sheen to them. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you have fun with your pumpkins. Um, I have all the supplies at bluestarathome.com with the molds and the paints and the glazes and the brushes, you know, anything that you might need. Um, you can pick up the pumpkins at Hobby Lobby. Some of these came from Hobby Lobby. Some came from Dollar Tree. Some came from Walmart. So, up the pumpkins and transform them and make them gorgeous for your fall holiday decor. Thanks for following along. If you like the video, um, like and share and comment if you have questions and I'll see you next time.